Oh, we're live. Welcome to episode 15 of Yanking Change, a podcast where we talk everything endurance. I'm Matt Momont. I'm Vince Matteo. And I'm Maria Simone. And today we have a very special guest. But before, we haven't talked in a while, guys. How's it going? Hey. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it's been a while since our last uh, our last go round. So I know from Twitter, Vince has been playing on the Western States oh course. It's that so was... ugly, dude. I know, I know. It's it's awful. I I really I don't know why people even want to do that race. Nobody should throw in the lottery. <laughs> no, no, it's so ugly. And it's like it's not even like anyone goes to that race. It's like stupid. I know, I know. So the the part where so Laura when. Uh, back in was it February, March? Matt and Brendan and I went up there to run on the trail, and it was like snowed out, and we had to kind of do this makeshift uh, run. And uh, we got to about two miles out from where our car was, and there was this raging river crossing that young Matt there wanted to leap to his death and trying to get across. And uh, and and then we finally decided to, to go back the other way. Well, I went out there this past weekend, and it was about three inches of water. You could cross over, and uh, I was like, oh, yeah, okay. You spent like an hour trying to figure out how to cross that thing, too. Well, this guy, Woody, he's like overeducated, and he's like, oh, we can take this log and push it in. It's like, you know, like a three-ton tree that had fallen down, and they're over there trying to push it. It's not moving, of course, and, you know. We've been fine. No, we would have died. <laughs> so anyway, so Maria, what the hell was this like race you did last weekend that was like fifty miles? But like... okay, so it's first of all, the the race director is a wonderful human being. The race directors. I just met the second race director. I, I we've known the the one guy Andy for for a while, and um. He's sick. He's a sick fuck is basically what it boils down to. But I love him, and it's fun. But it's it was hands down the hardest 17 hours, 17 hours For 50 of my miles? life. It was, it was 88K, which was really officially 50. Dude, the ish on the miles is, like, off the charts, right? So <laughs> you actually come into an aid station, and at one aid station, the, the guy there at, at the aid said to me, well, it's two and a half miles up to the summit of Mount Musulamu. And he's like, and the good news there is they're forest registry miles, not Andy miles. <laughs> like, that's how, like, well-known this dude is for, like, ishing the miles. So the race was, like, officially, I think, 58 miles, but for me it wound up being 61. One because despite oh, incredibly well marked turns, incre I mean, this was not the race director's fault by like even any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I went off course four times, <laughs> 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 which boiled down to about the three mile error. I mean, I, I didn't go too far each time, but each time I probably lost between a half a mile to three quarters of a mile. So you add that up, I I was about three miles over. Wasn't it a loop? It was th for me. It was three different loops. So you and looped back to the main, the Blueberry Hill Ski Center, but each loop was different. So I never saw oh. the same. I never saw like the same thing twice. Uh, now for John, John's course was slightly different. It was the same thing each time. He did the forty-eight hour. I just did the eighty-eight k. Just you know, um, and it was uh, hands down the heart, the hardest race I've ever done for like all the reasons. Uh, there were steep grades. It was. We've had a really cold spring, and it was 90 degrees, like, boop, whee! <laughs> uh, so there was that. Um, it, uh, I, you know, so I've been having a little bit of trouble with my hip. Uh, the hip totally held out for me during the race, but the problem is, is I've been favoring, so the hip was on the left side, so I've been standing on the right side, so I created, like, a little bit of a tweak in my ankle. That gave out in, like, the last six hours of the race, so I wound up having to walk a lot of the single track, because it was real rocky and uneven, and... Anytime I was on uneven surface, I, I couldn't, the ankle was just shooting pains into my knee, so that took a while. Um, I was in the middle of this, like, creepy-ass freaking single track at, like, 11 o'clock at night, hearing all these sounds, and people are like, we've seen bears, and we've seen that. I'm like, and at one point I thought to myself, well, it's nighttime, the bears are sleeping, and then I thought, no, bears forage at night, what the freak? <laughs> so, it was just like, I mean, I wish I had, like, a like a tape of what was going on in my head because it was it was crazy. I'm actually trying to write the blog post now because in hindsight it was funny. It was hilarious. Uh, but I was never so happy to see a finish line. 
Never so happy. <laughs> but it was great. It was an awesome experience. I will tell. What are you showing? Bear. Bear. Yeah. 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 Can you see that? Yeah, I can see that. There's um, big prints. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was an awesome race. I will totally do it again. I think I'm 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 toying with the idea of the 48 hour next year. Um, it was a great race. Race director is awesome. Like he, you know, it's really a, it's a fun race. The community is outstanding. Um, it's so for those of you listening, I did the Endurance Society's Infinitus race, uh, and they have. By, by the way, I was you know low on the totem pole of the crazy on this one. You know, so people listening, eighty k. That's so many miles. Well, there were people that did three eights, an eight, an eight, and an eight. So uh, one guy finished that. Um, and then a lot of people did in the 400 miles. So 888, it's like 552-ish miles, probably 555-ish miles, something like that. Um, so one guy completely finished that in 10 days. And then there was a bunch of people that did in the 400s, a couple people in the 300s. Uh, so some pretty amazing things there. And then they had a 72-hour race, 48-hour race, the 88K, a marathon, and an, and an 8K, which is probably the world's hardest 8K. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, after the race, the race director was like, you know, we, we tried to put together the most challenging course we could. And I'm like, well, congratulations. You succeeded. You win. <laughs> you win. I loved it, though. It was, like, right in my wheelhouse. It really it really was. Like, you're, you're out there on the trail. At one point, you're thinking to yourself, what the frig am I doing out here? And you're like, man, this is – it's actually great. I turned off my headlamp at one point, and there were so many stars because there's no light pollution. It was It was amazing was amazing. I think only two women finished, maybe three. Um, and the woman that won is a professional sky runner. So that's cool. So she kicked my ass. David, Go <laughs> David Goggins won it overall. Uh, so, and she was second after him. And not by much. So that tells you kind of what was there. And then I think about 40% of the field dropped out of that race. So I feel, I feel happy just to have survived and finished. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, <laughs> it's a long yeah. way on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, if you see the picture on Twitter of what I look like when I finished, it was a no. hot, haggard mess, man. I've never looked so ugly in my life. It was like, oh my god, who is that old chick that just oh. aged like ten years? <laughs> it was awesome though, Laura. You got to do it next year. I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it sounds like it sounds like something in her wheelhouse. <laughs> it yeah, once we get talking to Laura, you're gonna see this is we'll, we will see her there next year. I'm sure. <laughs> All right, we'll introduce her. Okay. Maria, go yeah, for it. So, so I met Laura Noblack uh, at, at the Double Anvil this year in Florida, uh, and I was super impressed by her grit. She was set up at the tent right next to us, and uh, I knew I wanted to have her on the show, know a little bit more about her. Uh, we got to know her family a little bit, the incredible people. Um, she grew up in St. Cloud, Minnesota. She started running at the age of nine and did her first marathon the summer after she graduated high school. Uh, after that, she soon became interested in doing a triathlon, so naturally she was attending the University of Colorado out of Boulder and was like, huh, I think I'll do an Ironman. So, <laughs> yes, her first triathlon was Ironman. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, why skip all the baby shit? Let's just go right to the the, the big kahuna there. So her first triathlon was indeed an Ironman. Uh, you did that in August 2015, correct? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so last summer, yeah. Fell in love with triathlons while she was training for it, thought it was awesome. And she said, you know, I think a second triathlon should be a double Ironman. I mean, why not? So Why not? That's, yeah, I mean, that, the progression here makes obvious sense. Um, and so sh her second triathlon ever was the Florida Double Anvil that we just did in March of 2016. And uh, her successful completion of that race, and this is what's I think, super cool, uh, qualified her for a Guinness World Book record for the youngest finisher of an event of that type. Uh, she's joining us here from Spain, where she's studying abroad. And welcome to the show, Laura. We're happy to have you. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. So oh, how, <laughs> yeah. So how have you been? I've been doing well. Yeah. Um, it was a, it was definitely a busy semester last semester training for that race, and so it was nice to have like a couple weeks afterwards where it's like, oh my goodness, I can do like normal human things on my weekends <laughs> instead of like you know biking and running the entire time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I mean, I know how busy it gets with having a job and, and, and a fairly flexible schedule. It's got to be pretty challenging with, uh, with managing that training. So we'll, we'll, we'll we're going to get into that. I want to, I want to know a little bit more about that. But I kind of wanted to, t to start, I mean, if you guys don't mind, I'll, I'll just start the questions and then jump in where you want. Um, I wanted to take it back. So you said you started running at nine. Were you doing that competitively or just for fun or? 
both. No, actually, it was my my dad. He um he ran a marathon in his early thirties, and has always been a kind of like you know he'll go for two in between two and six mile run every couple of days. And so one day he was just kind of ready to go, like lacing up his shoes to go running, and asked me if I wanted to join. And I was like, oh yeah, sure, I'll join. Um, I just, I just liked it, you know, and I've I've never really stopped. I've done it consistently ever since then. So awesome. Yeah. And so I guess from your dad doing the marathon, that's kind of what brought you into, I want to try a marathon? Well, it was kind of, um, yes and no. Um, I had a friend in high school who was an incredible runner. She was, you know, at state every single year. And um, I think the first marathon she ran, she, like, qualified for Boston in when she was 16, like, super fast. And so it was, it was kind of watching her being like, oh, like, that's doable in high school. That's doable, like, at my age. Yeah. Um, and then I remember my dad making, like, this kind of stray comment at me when I was, like, I, know, like, I was 15 or something like that. He's like, hey, Laura, you know, you should run your age in miles on your birthday to celebrate. And... That's when I started doing that at 16, and then someone was just like, why aren't you running a marathon if you're running, like, 16, 17 miles? And I was just like, oh, you know, like, I should do that. <laughs> I love it. I love it, and I love what you're saying. Like, you know, you see your friend do it, and you think that's doable. I mean, it really speaks to the volume of, like, having, I guess, role models or having people that you yeah. perceive like you to sort of open up the doors of the possibility. But you have a real, like, I mean, I really noticed this when I was talking to you. You have a real, like, can-do spirit. So, uh -huh. I, I mean, there's not much, you know, I, I think, like, I, I could show you anything and you'd be like, oh, I could do that. Oh, I could do that. I could build a car. I can, you know, whatever. Uh, you just really, I, I was really super impressed by that, by you, for sure. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, what was the marathon that you did? What was your first marathon? I did a uh, grandma's marathon okay. in northern Minnesota. Okay. Yeah, it was um, it's like it's around Duluth area. If you're familiar, yeah, about if you're familiar with the race at all or Minnesota. Well, it's a top ten. It's a top ten oh, U.S. That? marathon. So the it's supposed to be pretty 10. good. I actually okay. So here's the other story. I've only done one marathon as a race. <laughs> like I've done like. <laughs> The distance, a lot of times, but I've only done, like, one actual race. So I was, like, super, super self-conscious about this, the fact that I had, like, no racing history when we were doing the double anvil, because I was just like, oh, my goodness, these people have done, like, hundreds. Like, they've done hundreds of marathons. Like, someone, like, I think someone even wrote on their page, like, more marathons than I can count or something like that, you know, <laughs> 10 Ironmans, and I'm just like, oh, I've done one triathlon, I've done, you know, like, four marathon distances in my life, so, yeah. Well, it's funny, because, like, I was trying to stalk you a little bit online prior to this just to get some background on you and to come up with some questions, and, and, and I went up onto Athlinks, and it's like, who? And then I went up onto <laughs> Ultra Sign Up, and it's like, who? So I started, like, searching around, and I was like, okay, I think I found, I think I found this woman, you know, and, and I see that, like, you know, you've done, you've done a bunch of the 14ers, right? That's you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, found, I found some stuff, and, and so I was like, all right, well, okay, she's not, she's like off the grid as far as like where we would normally stalk people, but I think I found her, I think I know about her. <laughs> it's, like, it's fine. I mean, if you, you know, if, if you're doing the mileage, um, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're racing, and obviously you, you got through it, so, you, you know, you're, whatever you're doing is working. <laughs> yeah. Did, working so far, right? <laughs> were you running... Were you running track across country in high school? You know, yeah, I did. I um, I was a volleyball player in the fall, and I'd actually wanted to play in college. Whole other story. But I did track um, seventh, pretty much through twelfth grade, and it actually was a terrible experience. I got um, I got injured almost every single year, and it was one of those things where it was like I just wasn't fast, and so like beating one person, like not coming in dead last, was just like that was that was a celebration. <laughs> <laughs> so I found an article uh, about your double anvil, and it said you were training with a broken arm. Yes. So I, um, you, so injuries are yeah. common with you. <laughs> okay, so here's, I had, before this fall, I'd never had a concussion. I'd never broken a bone, which I used to play rugby. So that's like Jeez. that. I, I don't know why I got a concussion and broke things 
when I was in a, like a totally non-contact sport. But um, I was coming back from like this is like a series of accidents that happened this fall. Um, I was coming back from a climbing trip with friends where there was like tons of falling rock, all this stuff. We had to like bring helmets, crazy. We're in the car on the way back, and we hit a deer. And that's when I get a concussion. Not oh like on this crazy mountain climbing, like having rocks falling everywhere. No, in the car. And then um, a couple weeks later, I'm biking. I crash my bike, and I break my finger. I get another concussion. And maybe you would, I don't know what this, like, string of terrible events, everything comes in threes. But um, the, I'm, you know, originally from Minnesota. I was in, um back with my family over Christmas break, and the night I was back in Colorado, I turned to my roommate, and I'm like, we should go hiking, you know, because there's mountains here, that's amazing, and it was a super icy night, and we're up in the mountains, and it was like literally the stupidest thing, like, I just slip, and I hit my arm on a rock, and it, it breaks, um, it like never, yeah, and I, I had a bunch of friends who were like pre-med, and I went and I was like, you guys, like, I don't know if it's broken. Like, I've never, like, you know, besides my finger, I've never broken anything before. And they're like, oh, it's fine. Like, sleep it off. It was oh not God. fine. <laughs> not you fine. Okay. You were like, there's an alien all coming out of my shoulder. Yeah, there's, like, <laughs> bone sticking out. You're bleeding and these pre-med. So I need the names of these doctors so that I don't <laughs> you know, go to them for a consultation at some point. <laughs> Doctors yet? Give them time. It's, it's okay. They have time. <laughs> oh, so I didn't man. know that you had a broken arm training for this, Laura. So how did that affect? Did it affect your training? And did the concussion? Because I know concussions are no joke either. Yeah. Um. With a broken arm, so I, I broke it in mid to late January. Um. And so I was almost like, man, should I be doing this race? Like, <laughs> sure. Um. It's my second triathlon. I have a broken arm. What, what am I doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I went to the doctor, and he's like, he's very skeptical. I was like, so I'm, I'm training for like a, an, like an ultra distance triathlon. He's like, so how how far? And I was like, you know, can I can I still run and bike? And he's like, well, how far are you running and biking and training? And I was like, mm, do I tell him I should? <laughs> and I was like, well, do I tell him I, it's just you know. a while. <laughs> And he's like, well, if if the bone is healing, like, you know, you, you'll come back for your exercise, it's healing, you know, sure. And so I just wasn't able to swim, really. Okay. Um, and so I was really scared about that because I only got two, like, two-mile swims in before the race. Um, but I, I totally forgot that, like, wetsuits are a thing. Because I I wasn't wearing one in training, and so I was like, oh, this is gonna be terrible. Like I'm gonna like I'm gonna quit after like three miles of swimming, and then I was like, wait a second, like wetsuits? Oh yeah, <laughs> there's this magic buoy that I'll be inside of. That's awesome. Yes, that's awesome. And you made the swim. You were fine, right? Yeah. No, actually, um, actually, I think I kept. Almost the same pace as I had during the the Ironman. Jeez. So I was like, okay, like that's that's all right. <laughs> that's awesome. That's incredible. Yeah. So yeah, so so that answers part of the question of how did you train for the double. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so when when you had your uh, arm in a cast, were you just like kind of laying in the trainer best you could, or I mean, I assume you weren't riding outside, right? <laughs> No, I was. Oh, um, good lord! <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. We got to We got to mute Matt's off. headphones because we don't want to give many ideas, man. <laughs> I got the cast off two weeks before the race, or somewhere in there, I think. Oh, maybe no. maybe two and a half. But Do you have any pictures of you riding with a cast outside? I just I just want to post that you up. Know, somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. I have any pictures, but I'm sure some people took pictures of me. She's got one cast, and the and she's doing a selfie while riding, Matt. <laughs> she's got game. <laughs> right, right now, I just want to say to all the people, what's your excuse? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really that's that's pretty. I mean, it's probably not safe, but it's awesome that you did. Yeah, it. don't try this at home. <laughs> don't try this at home. I think it's great you survived. Don't that's learn awesome. from me. <laughs> 
That's great. And was the concussion an issue at all? Like, did you have problems with headaches or anything like that, or, or not really? Yeah, you know, um, those happened a little earlier, and so I really, I didn't really up my training until um, kind of like at mid-late January, okay. around the time I broke my arm. Yeah. The concussions happened in like, I think it was uh, late September and then late October, oh, okay. Okay. and so that was definitely like, um, the first one in the car accident was a lot worse, um, and that one was kind of like, I had more like the balance issues and like light issues, right. um, but it, it wasn't like, it wasn't terrible, I didn't have a very bad concussion okay. either time, which was good. That's good. That's good. So let's let's just backtrack a little. We talked a little bit about about the double, but let's backtrack to the first Iron Man decision or yeah. the first triathlon decision, which was an <laughs> Iron Man. Um, so what what were you thinking? You were like, okay, I, I, what got you? What piqued your interest about triathlons? Because you said you went for a marathon and then you got interested in triathlons. What what was kind of that that turnover there? Well, you know, I don't I don't remember exactly, but I do remember my freshman year of college. I remember thinking that like. Hey, like I'm in okay shape right now. Like I could probably do a half without like training too much for it. And then I was like, well, of course. Like that means if I trained for it, I could probably do a full. Why why mess around with those halves you business? Of course. Um, but the thing is that why? I grew up in Minnesota, right? So like I knew how to swim and not drown. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know how to actually swim. Like the whole thing where your head's underwater and you're like breathing and you're doing this thing. And you're I've, swimming. I've right. never done that before. Right. And um, I, I'm pretty sure I gave, I, I'm pretty sure the lifeguards at the pool were like confident they'd be using their CPR school skills <laughs> at some point on me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That uh, that first few, it's like it's, I remember when I first started swimming. I thought I was in shape. I did like I think four lengths of the pool, and I was like, "What the hell is this all about?" What you know? is? <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't know how to freestyle. I was like, I I was like try. I dog paddled to the other side of the pool, and I was like, "Yeah, I could do a triathlon." <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'll be fine. I'm sure, it won't be a big deal. So, what so, was your first? What was your first race? It was an Ironman, but which one? Oh, uh, it was the Boulder. Iron oh, okay. Man. Yeah. And and how did that go? Yeah, it went really well. Um, so like, I think I think for me it was I'm very, I'm one of those people who it's like, in training, I like, I'll do I'll do like I made sure to do like a three mile swim in training, and I made sure to do like a hundred ten mile bike ride in training. Um, so that I could be like absolutely sure I'd be able to at least do like them when they're not back to back. Um, and so the race I thought was really fun. Um, I really liked it, and it was nice because I was so familiar with the Boulder area that um, it, it was like the bike course was on my biking route. Um, but the swim was terrible. Oh, I forgot about the swim. Um, it was like I had never done, I'd never done a swim with that many people. Yeah. And that's terrifying. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like there's all these people splashing around you and they're like grabbing you and you're like getting pushed everywhere. And I like I've never had a panic attack before. But I'm pretty sure I had one in the nice. like it took me probably half it took me probably like a good one plus miles to get to the point where I wasn't like sticking my head above the water and like paddling because I, I just couldn't I couldn't breathe you know I think there's a lot of people experienced iron men listening that can relate with that not just like yeah. not just the first iron man experience or not just the first triathlon experience but even after you've done it a few times mm -hmm. there's really nothing like that first 800 yards especially is boulder a mass start was it a mass start well okay it was it wasn't going to be and this is i think where it started, like, the reason why it was so bad was that they were going to do a staggered start, mm -hmm. and then um, the water temperature was too warm, so they gave people, you know, the option to take off their wetsuit and do it, and those people were staggered, but probably, like, I think more than three-quarters of the people there were just like, no, we're going to keep our wetsuits on, mm -hmm. and those people were just kind of clumped in a mass behind them, and they tried to self-organize a little bit, but it, it really didn't work, 
Mm -hmm. um, so people were all just mixed, and yeah. Okay. I think okay. It caused so, a yeah. lot of problems in the water. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's that first experience is hmm. is pretty is pretty terrifying, and there's really and you figured out in training there's no way to kind of recreate that. <laughs> yeah, you can a little bit. You get your friends around you, but it's not the same as 2,000 people, no. you know. Yeah. No. I always tell people, uh, you know, when you're in the water, you know, on a mass start, look around you and look at those people and 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 think, are these people friendly, you know? And if you're like in a group of young dudes, you need to move because <laughs> yeah. those, those guys are not, they're not fun. <laughs> they're they're coming out swinging for yeah. sure. Yeah. My first Ironman, I waited three minutes after the after the gun went off. I just stood on the shore and just waited. I was like, I'm, I'm good. Mad. I'm good here. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm just going to wait this one out. And then I swam way outside of the buoy. I didn't see or touch a person the entire 2.4 miles. I was pretty excited. Wow. <laughs> of course, I probably swam like 2.8. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. No, it's uh, it. the second. It. The second one was horrific, though. Oh, my God. That was horrible because I thought I was a big girl and I could handle it. So I feel your pain. <laughs> Feel your pain. I, I, you know what? I've done, I've done a bunch of them, and I'm, and I'm, kind of a front of the pack swimmer, and 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 I still don't like the mass yeah. start. It's yeah. just because you get some people that are like, they just get so aggro, you know, and it's like mm -hmm. you don't, you don't need to do this, you know, and they're trying to like drown you. It's like, yeah. And yes, I mean, I don't care who you are. You go underwater and you take a mouthful of water and you get a panic attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, d I remember, I think, the beach starts bother me more than the in-water starts. Um, yeah. Like when you got to start on the beach. I remember I did Quasi one year, and this isn't a, a big Ironman, but I did Quasi one year, and it was a beach start, and my wave had females and males in it, which is weird, right? Like, that's that's not common. And yeah. I, this is when I, this I think it was my first year with you, Vince, and I remember I was like, I'm swimming the buoy line, I'm be a big girl, I'm doing this, check me out. I never looked behind me. I didn't realize there was dudes in my wave. I thought it was like females, whatever age yeah. or group I was at the time. I thought it was females. I never looked behind me. Those aggro dudes were right behind me. I got pummeled, swum, pushed down. I had to grab a kayak. That's how bad it was. Ooh. I yeah. was like freaked the freak out. I was like, whoa, what just happened? So that I learned my lesson. Always look around. <laughs> no. Always look around. Always look Don't you. swim with boys. Yeah. So, well, not all boys. It's not. It's not fair to say that. Only those young boys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like Matt. Like Matt. Yeah. Matt, I know Matt. You you dunk my so head under and try to kill me. All right. So you you make it through the swim, and we haven't talked about the bike at all. Is this a strength, a weakness? You're okay. Actually, the bike is my favorite. Okay. Um, which I I didn't start like the farthest I biked when I started training for the Ironman was like. It was less than 30 miles. I don't know if it was 30 fully. Um, so, like, I feel like the run would be the strongest point, but I like the bike. That's my favorite. And so you went from 30 miles to 110 and then an Ironman. <laughs> Makes sense. Man, I wonder what the build was like for that. It was like 30, 50, 70. <laughs> I think that's about how it went. Oh, no. Something like that, yeah. So did you have a coach or a plan or something you were following, or were you just kind of like going um, out there and killing yourself every weekend? Well, I was kind of like, I, I saw this plan on the Internet that looked okay. I thought, this looks nice. Which one? Where? I want to know this plan. <laughs> yeah, this plan is this plan <laughs> has serious. Um, I it had me doing stuff every day, and I'm like, I can't. I don't have time to do stuff every day. So I like slashed probably like three of the workouts out, um, and just made the weekend ones longer. Okay. It's probably what, not what you're supposed to do, but how did you feel? That hey, you was, finished, so whatever. Yeah, yeah, you made it work. You worked it how out. How did you feel that in with school? Because I don't remember school. I had a lot of time on the weekends to be out biking for seven hours. <laughs> Maybe so, it wasn't a priority at the time. Yeah, with, with Iron Man, it was, it was definitely hard. With the double, it was like every like, okay, I only trained like one or two days a week for the double, just because I literally did not have time, like none. I was working a like ten to fifteen hour job. I had a ten hour practicum at a middle school. I was taking full credits. It was just like literally nothing. 
And so every Saturday, I would go out, and I'd wake up super early, and I'd bike 150 to 200 miles, and then I'd run, like, 5 to 15 afterwards. And that no. was, like, my training for the week. Holy shit, Laura. Jeez. Wow. That's just impressive. Like, that's, that's a solid I day every weekend. I didn't have time. How, how do you... Uh, like, did you sleep? Or, like... <laughs> Could you walk after this? No, I, well, I'm sorry. Sorry. So let's say so you bike 150 to 200 miles, and then you run 10 to 15. On one day. So, so I'm sorry. What time do you start, and what time do you finish? I mean, I wake up, like, Two around days. 3. I'd start before the sun came up. I'd bike until it got dark, and then I'd run, I don't know, till really late. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, no, no, you got to give me. So you're up That's at three. Amazing. You're biking at four. When are you finishing? Are we talking nine o'clock, like, ten o'clock? Sunset, which was like no, the sunset. Oh my I don't even remember. I just I would bike until I would try to hit 150, 200 miles, something like that. Did you have a nutrition plan, or did you have food with you on this? Oh, I had food. I had food with me. Okay, I was like, I had a bottle of water. <laughs> I heard about your nutrition during the double, Laura. My my crew was like impressed with your iron stomach. I know that. <laughs> I know did that you eat tacos? Good. There's there's a person in the audience, and he wants to know: Did you eat tacos? <laughs> no, but that's oh. what is that when I was biking. It's like what is what is the cheap food while you're out biking? You know, and like I'm one of those people who's like after a certain point, I need something with protein in it. And so, like, gas station hot dogs, like, every, that oh. was, that was yep. the food, that was the go-to. Oh, man. Marie's just nodding, because she knows. Oh, God. I mean, I'm barely stomaching Perpetuum, and this woman is eating Jeez. hot dogs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my goodness. I, I need protein, so I get a hot dog. <laughs> Is there? Uh, I guess there's protein in there. <laughs> I call that protein. Somewhere. Laura, were you also yeah. eating? Didn't you also eat McDonald's or something? Didn't you have McDonald's? Your dad got you McDonald's, I thought. Oh yeah, yeah, my dad got me McDonald's. <clears throat> yeah. I think I'd like puke if I had McDonald's on like a regular day just like, for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so That's what I'm saying. Wow. Iron, iron, freaking stuff. That is. I'm, I'm, I'm that's impressed. The thing is that like normally. I can't stomach that stuff. Like, McDonald's, oh, make me feel disgusting. But if I'm racing, then it's like, I need it, you know? Well, it's high calorie. I don't yeah. know. I do not know about that feeling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. I feel like I need, like, a pad and a Sharpie, and I need to write these signs and put them up, like, not plant-based. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, you're also talking to be vegetarian, so we're like, whoa. <laughs> Wow. Oh, I think it's amazing. I think Hot it's dogs. Amazing. I guess that's I think those are high calorie too, aren't they? Yeah, yeah they're, they're they're fairly high calorie, okay. right? Especially with the bun, you know, the buns themselves. Oh, a lot of really good. good calories in there, yeah. Oh, jeez. Um, so given that you didn't have that much time to train, I mean, did you know that like you maybe needed more training or were you worried about that coming into the double or not really? You just kind of what, yeah, what I was you... really worried about it, um, and that was one thing where it's like, I didn't have a coach, and there really wasn't, well, there's not a lot of people who do these races, I feel like, so there wasn't a lot on the internet, like, about how you should train for a double, and so for me, I was just like, well, I'll just make, like, training as similar to racing as possible, and so hence the, like, <laughs> crazy long bike ride, crazy long run every single Saturday. Okay. You're like old school, like go out there and blast. Yeah, yourself. you know what? And, and and I got to be honest, don't d keep doing it until it doesn't work for you, and then <laughs> and then try something different. But don't don't deviate because it's clearly working for you. <laughs> I'm amazed in college. I'm thinking, I'm looking back at college and thinking, if I spent my Saturday getting up at three, I want to didn't go to bed until three a.m. on a Friday night. <laughs> wow. So getting up and riding. That's 150 to 200 miles. Yeah. <laughs> it was bad in January. I don't know if I can do that now. It was okay, like, Feb we had a warm February, but I remember this one time when I got up 
and it was like middle of January, and I was out biking before the sun came up, and I like I reached down to get a drink, and my water bottles were frozen. Like com- it was like 20 degrees or something like that, completely frozen, nothing. Were, were you biking alone? Yeah. And and but, like I said, and, people, no fear in this one. It's yeah, yeah. A new attitude. I'm no fear up. or or no common sense. I love this, it. Is, <laughs> this is in Boulder, right? <laughs> this is in Boulder, yeah. So, and so where are you riding 200 miles? I mean, are you riding up the mountains or? <laughs> you know, when um, so in Boulder in the winter it can get really windy. Okay. And so normally I love to like go up to Fort Collins. I went up to the Wyoming border a, a couple weeks ago with a friend. Um, but when it's winter, I don't like to venture very far away from Boulder. And so in the morning when it was like still dark, there's a couple roads that like um they have like really good shoulders and it's kind of like in a neighborhood and I would just do a loop, you know, until the sun came up. And then I felt comfortable like going somewhere else without having cars hit me. Well that was smart. That was so smart. That, that was <laughs> Is it, is it like a one mile loop and you did it like two hundred times? Because I just <laughs> well, that would be like the race, man. <laughs> I just that would be like the race. Yeah, the race wasn't much longer than that. That's oh funny. my goodness. So okay, I have to ask. I, I'm, I'm still going back to this college thing. How do you fit all this in in college? Like, do you do anything else? Um, not really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, that that I can relate to because I don't yeah. do anything yeah, else either. Else now. <laughs> yeah, um, I have a pretty solid group of friends that really likes to climb 14ers, and yeah. so I guess like I'll I'll do things with friends, but not in the like traditional college student doing things with yeah. friends. It's like oh, I'll go climb a mountain. That's like my hanging out for the week. That's, awesome. <laughs> um, That's good. That's, That's awesome. awesome. I wish I did that. Yeah. I, was in, I was in I was in Indiana. No mountains there. Yeah. I, I yeah. wish I was a much healthier twenty year old. I, yeah. I really I just I feel like I did it all wrong in my twenties. So you're you you've got a much better approach there, Laura. Oh, yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> hot dogs aside. Like hot, hot, dog. <laughs> hot dogs in two hundred mile one day a week training. Two hundred we get it all in one day. If if those are if those are the vices, then you are so solid. <laughs> so I read that you did sixteen of the Colorado fourteens? Yes. Wow, and over over what period of time? Um, well, actually, I started climbing them when I was twelve. Um, <laughs> my dad climbed Mount Rainier back. I I don't know how old he was, but so he's he's like he likes the mountains. And every year, my family and I would take a road trip from Minnesota to Colorado, um, and we'd see my family in Fort Collins, and then we would climb um, a couple fourteeners, and that's what made me want to move out to Colorado. And yeah, I kept climbing them when I moved out here. Nice. So uh, any more any more to check off or I don't know how many fourteeners uh, Colorado has. It has fifty four. Holy uh, smokes. Yeah. And last year I did three in the winter. And that was oh, an entire new adventure. Like, yeah. Yeah. That no was doubt. really hard. So did you have to use like crampons or like yeah, yeah. yeah. crampons? Um, some people brought ice axes. Yeah. Oh, like this one. It was so weird. Um, the night before I I was gonna do the first one I had ever done in the winter. I'm hanging out with my boyfriend and he goes, Oh, Laura, like make sure you pack sunglasses. And I was like, Okay, like sun like are, okay. He's like, Otherwise you'll you'll burn your eyeballs. Like you're sunburn your eyeballs. And I was like. Oh my goodness! Like that sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one of this group of like five, like there are like four guys and me who are climbing, and um, none of them are wearing sunglasses. I remember coming down like the mountain into a super bright sunny day and just blinding snow. We're sitting at this pizza place afterwards, and they slowly start like rubbing their eyes, and I see their like their eyeballs just like turn red. And they had to like sit down in the basement in the dark, like one for several days, because they were so like just burnt. I was like, Holy oh my crap. goodness. Jeez, guys. Yeah. Yikes. And the one part on my body that I hadn't put sunscreen on was like the underside of my nose. Like, because you. Stop <laughs> it. 
sunscreen on the underside of your nose. But the sun rays, like reflecting back, burnt my nose so badly I had blisters on it. I was like, this is crazy. This is crazy. So, it, it, with, with the. I can hear this, Pace. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. This she, she hasn't gone for her run yet, so she's like, freaking, like, what is happening? I'm so angry, mommy. Let's go. Um, uh, with these 14ers, do you have like aspirations to do like more climbing or like Everest kind of stuff? Or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, nothing like that. I'm, I'm actually, I don't really like heights or oh, exposure, okay. and so which is kind of ironic, being that I really like climbing mountains. Yeah, but, um, I don't like some 14ers are more just like a steep, hard hike kind of to the top, and those are the ones that I've done mainly. Okay. The the one that had all the falling rock um, this September was probably the worst that I'd done, but it, it still it wasn't it wasn't as bad as some of the other 14ers and some of the other mountains that okay. are out there. So no like backhanded crab scrabbling down or anything like that. No, none of that. <laughs> that's, that's not for me. Yeah, yeah. I broke I, my arm on a little hiking trail. That's that's not for me. Yeah, I share your fear of heights. It's uh, but I keep I like you. I love I like the climbing of the mountains and I like being mm -hmm. up at the top. But I'm like scared to freaking death when I get there. So it's yeah, like this, it's like this weird push and pull with yourself. Like I want to do it. Oh my god, I might die. I want to do it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's such a weird experience. Yeah, that's uh, that's so no Everest. Okay, I hear you. No Everest. Yeah. All right. All right. I, mean, I you have to ask with you because you've really uh. Yeah. yeah, I thought she was doing that next weekend. Like, one of my hobbies show up. is watching mountaineering like disaster documentaries. Yeah, okay. Which is kind of like a morbid thing to be super interested in, but it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. So, yeah. uh, so what's uh, what's what's uh, next on your plans? More doubles, more triples, quintuple, something else insane? What's going on? <laughs> Well, I'm planning to do the triple in, what is October? Late October? Yeah, oh, in Virginia. oh we'll see you in Virginia. Good, cool. <laughs> Wait, hey. you did a double this year, and now you're going to go do a triple? Why not? <laughs> yeah, oh, my so Saturday is going to be 300-mile ride and a 25-mile run. She's going to start at midnight and end at midnight. Are you training in Spain for this? Are you training I'm in have Spain? I'm a little better at the whole training thing. Yeah, well, how are you doing in Spain? Oh yeah, I'm I'm doing well. I actually I bought a used like antique bike, and Maria, you would laugh at it because if well, I, I was laughing at this because you were that you were talking about the water bottle thing. Yeah. This thing has the shifters like on the frame. On the down tube. Yeah, on the down tube. Yeah, that's awesome. I got my hand stuck in the wheel because I was just, like, Okay, whoa, so. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hang, hang on for a second. Glasses. So you're saying antique. I just want you to know, those were bikes that I rode when I was younger. <laughs> so antique! You know, yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. like you, you little youngster. I'm sorry. <laughs> we are so old, Laura. I know. <laughs> I found this antique. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Wait, would wow. you ride that thing 300 miles every weekend? Um, I rode it, like... So I haven't, I haven't gone on a super long one yet, but I rode it like 80 last, oh, last weekend. Oh, wow. So, oh, I'm sure it fits you really well. You got, you know. Actually, you know, it's oh, probably yeah. pretty comfortable because it's probably made out of steel. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, really I mean, heavy. you've got time. It's, <laughs> only, really heavy. it's only June. I mean, you've got you've got time. I mean, you don't really <laughs> yeah, you have got, like, here. three months. Yeah. I mean, my, my, yeah, like Vince said, what you're doing is working for you, but you might want to spread the load out maybe a few extra days. No, 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 don't, <laughs> don't mess with her. Don't mess with her. Don't let, her let her do her thing. Don't yeah. listen to us. We don't know what the hell we're doing. I know. Apparently, That's true. Know. That's true. We're doing it wrong. We're doing the old people. <laughs> the old people. Yeah. I'm wow. serious. Well, you know a lot more than I do, so. No, apparently we don't know how to use it. Uh. <laughs> So okay, cool. So we'll see you at the triple. So I guess there. Is, so you'll be probably the Guinness World Book finisher of that too for youngest. I would Jeez. guess. Yeah. Hopefully. Now, did, yeah, I um, I was checking with Steve Kirby. So like, I was the youngest woman to do the double, right. and I think I'm. 
I feel like we're looking through the the record, like the you know the books and stuff. I think I might be youngest overall yeah. in the triple. We're not like completely sure yet. Yeah, because what it is, you were you were you turned twenty one three weeks before the race, right? Yeah. And you have to be twenty one to do these races. Wow. So, yeah. So the chances of somebody beating your record are pretty, pretty slim. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Wow, yeah. you could hold this for a long time. Yeah. So what else do you have besides the triple? I mean, because, you know, you got to go big. <laughs> well, see, I'm one of those people who's like, I, I don't race a lot, as you no, probably have figured out. Um, so I don't, after the triple, I don't know. It would be cool to do a quintuple, but I'll see you, you know? Now, quintuple, do you want to do the continuous or the one a day? I think I would do the one a day, at least yeah. start with that. So you're thinking about doing that in Florida in 20, next year? Are they doing that? Oh, no, no not next year. It's not going to be next year. I think they're talking 2018 for that. Yeah. Forget that. Scratch that. Forget that. Do you, re do you recover like a freak? Like, how do you get back up? <laughs> She's 21, Matt. Of course she recovers. I'm not that much like, older. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Matt's a puppy, too. I'm not exactly, but I'm thinking, man, if I am in a day, if I, I'd be, I would be. Oh. They have decas, oh. Matt. They have decas. No, yeah, I know, no, I know, I know. But she seems to have some sort of like phenomenal hey, recovery because recovery. If, I, I feel like I'm accomplished, but if I went out and did a 200-mile ride and a 15-mile run, I think I'd be wrecked for a bit. <laughs> yeah, I can't even imagine if I did that this weekend. I wouldn't be able to walk at work. <laughs> All right. Way to go. Way to go. <laughs> wow. I mean, um... Made the race a lot easier, you know. I yeah. think so. Well, yeah, you did the race every weekend, so you. Know. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of the that's idea. What, that's what I'm impressed with that recovery. And, and just think how much easier it'll be if you can get more than two whole swims in. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> you know, I, I. There's a lot of people not liking you right now. Yeah. You and I might be one of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, like, I don't want to recover like that. I know. I have this yeah. love-hate relationship with you right now. Oh, I'm so <laughs> I, know. I love it. I think it's awesome. What is your, where, where do you fit time in for your boyfriend, and what does he do? So he actually – he's thought about becoming a professional mountaineer. Okay. And so – and he actually – if you hate me, you'll really hate him. Oh, my God. Because he was a game. Like, okay, Laura's a triathlete. I can't run. I sink when I try to swim. But I've, I've, you know, I've done mountain biking for a long time. So he found a road bike and he got it. His first ride was 20 miles. Then he was going to try to do an 80-mile ride. And he just went for it. Accidentally went 130 miles with, like, a 8,000 vertical feet elevation gain. Um, and so he calls me the next day. And he, like, bulged a disc in his neck because he didn't have a bike fit. And he's just lying on the couch being like, Laura, I biked 130 miles yesterday. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine what his butt felt like. I oh. know. I know. First, <laughs> on a bike that doesn't fit you? Oh, but he'll, he'll go on, like, he'll <laughs> accompany me on my, like, my long rides. Oh, that's nice. Biking, so. Yeah, that's nice. So that's your yeah. date. I, I appreciate that. That's that's like John and I's life. We see each other, you know, training. Uh, so uh, yeah. yeah, our our goal was um, last October. So there's this, the closest 14er to Boulder is called Long's Peak, and I've never done it before. And so neither of us had cars, and we're both like, hey, like you know, why don't we bike there? And we'll stay overnight, and they'll wake up in the morning. We'll trail run the mountain, and they'll bike back to Boulder. Um. But it got super cold that night, and so we're biking into Estes Park, and he got, like, hypothermia, and I was, like, super, super cold, and we're biking into Estes Park, and, it, like, the sun had already gone down, and we're biking on this bike trail, and I keep hearing this, like, weird kind of scream noise, like, all around me, and I knew that mountain lions made a scream noise. And I turned to him, and I'm like, Scott, like, is that, a, are these mountain lions? And he was just like, I, looking back on it, like, this was very much just like hypothermia or that talking. And he just goes like, yeah, 
Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And so we, we find this campground. We're setting up our like we're setting up camp and I keep hearing these noises around me. I'm like, Scott, we need to figure like we need to find some place that's farther away from the mountain lions. And he turns to me, he's like, Laura, what are you talking about? I'm like, those noises, you know, those were elk. <laughs> Why did you tell me they were mountain lions? We were biking on Esther's Park for like an hour, and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> oh, I love your adventure. You, I just love it. I can't, I can't wait to see like I, all the crazy shit you do. <laughs> yeah, wow. I love it. I love it. So that's probably the biggest insight into, into our dating life. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I wow. love it. Sounds like you guys are made for each other. That's perfect. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you guys that. you guys keep being you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not one to like necessarily believe in soulmates, but you two might be actually changing my mind on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my goodness. Cool. And you just did a successful fundraiser too. Yeah. Um yeah, so um both for the Iron Man and for the Devil, I've done fundraisers for kind of a cause that have to deal with sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. So this second one, um, I have a friend who she own like she runs several schools in South Asia, and they basically like keep women from being sold into sex trafficking or sold as child brides. Um, and so I was raising money to help build the third school and also send their graduates um, of this class to high school. That's awesome. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, it was, that's it was amazing. Great. Uh -huh. yeah. Congrats to you. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I think it adds, like, I, I've done fundraising into races, and I think it just adds, like, such a an extra piece, right? Because, I mean, what we do is pretty selfish, right? You go out by yourself and you enjoy, you know, you're, it's it's a selfish hobby, but when you <laughs> add that in, it's kind of like, it makes you feel like you're you're kind of getting people involved and helping others. I, I, I like it. It's cool. It's awesome. I like Yeah, I like, definitely. Yeah, I like the fundraising bit for it. Mm -hmm. So, cool. What else do we need to know about you, Laura? What, what other sort of amazing secrets are inside? <laughs> um... I eat hamburgers sometimes too. Wow! <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's great. Well, Laura, thank you so much for being on Yeah. Eating Chains. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta wrap it up. Yeah. Um, it's time. been awesome. Thank you. But I can't wait to hear about your next race because I'm yeah. sure you'll yeah. be well under trained and somehow crank it out of the park. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be in Virginia, so I'll be I'll be oh, I'll great. be uh, I'll be updating uh, what's happening. I'm not racing it, so I'll be able to uh, okay. to to spectate and uh, let everyone know how you're doing. I'm excited that you're going to be there. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gang's all together again. <laughs> <laughs> The little family. It's like a weird little thing that happens at these doubles and, and triples. It's like you, there's only 30 of you, basically, 30 to 40, mm -hmm. and you're just like, you can't help but like love each other at the end. It <laughs> it's just so like, true. Like, there's like no other option but to fall in love with each other. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming, Laura. It was great talking to you. Yeah, thanks to you guys. Thank yeah. you. And we'll be back in two weeks uh, with another episode of Yanking Chains. I don't know if we have a guest for that, but we'll find we'll find out. Yep.